Hi, third grade, it's Mrs. Kopaz, and this is your second art lesson for the school year. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce you to one of my very favorite artists, and that is Frida Kahlo. Um, I love Frida's work because she uses symbols in her artwork a lot. So she'll use something or paint herself with something that represents something else. Um, and that's always very interesting to me about her artwork. So um, Frida Kahlo grew up in Mexico. And in her paintings, she uh, would pose herself in different costumes and also in different places. Sometimes she'd be by herself in her portraits, and sometimes she would paint herself with other people. Frida was in a very bad bus accident when she was a young woman, uh, and she suffered really bad uh injuries as a result. Uh, so she spent a lot of time by herself because she was so badly injured. And she had a lot of time to paint herself, look at herself in the mirror and paint herself. Um, sometimes you'll even see her uh, painting herself with dogs or birds or monkeys. Uh, she, ha she really loved animals and nature and that comes out a lot in her self-portrait. Um, this portrait that she's done is of herself. So she is the self-portrait and then she's painted her husband who was also a famous painter uh, named Diego Rivera. And we kind of can tell that he is a famous painter because he's holding a palette and paintbrushes. So she's given us a little clue about things that he likes to do. So we're going to talk about two new, voc new vocabulary words today. The first is portrait and the second is self-portrait. You probably can already guess what they mean. So some artists choose to draw or paint portraits and a portrait shows the likeness of a person. Um, in this portrait, which is called Snow Queen, if we take a look at the girl that the artist has painted, we can kind of guess a little bit about how she's feeling based on the expression on her face and kind of how she's standing in the window. It looks like it's nighttime outside and it also looks like she has cut up some snowflakes out of paper and taped them to the window. My guess is, is that she's really hoping for a snow day. Uh, she looks excited, maybe because she knows she's going to get to play in the snow tomorrow. Uh, if we look at this portrait here, uh, this this little boy who has a little kitten on his lap and it looks like he's holding um, some kind of baked good in his hands, maybe for his breakfast or his lunch. If we look at his face, we can kind of tell a little bit about how he might be feeling. He doesn't look too happy. He almost looks nervous that maybe the person painting him is going to take his little treat away. Um, and the cat, we can even tell a little bit about how that kitten's feeling. Looks like the kitten's kind of, you know, maybe a little sleepy or maybe the kitten's thinking about taking his uh, treat too. So these are both portraits, both the Snow Queen and the Little Boy are both portraits. They're paintings that someone has painted of someone else. But if we look back at Frida Kahlo's work, those are self-portraits. Those are paintings that the artist has made of herself or it can be of himself. Okay. Um, a self-portrait is an artwork that shows the person that created it. So if we take a look at this student artwork by a student in third grade, you can see that this artist has included symbols, much like Frida Kahlo would, around herself, and she's even made a little frame around herself too. Um, so we today are going to create a self-portrait that incorporates things that you really like, that you feel represent you. We're going to make your face really large on the paper. We're going to show your neck and your shoulders, and we're going to create a border around your portrait too. And think about things that are important to you. And we're going to decorate that border that shows things that you really care about. So for today, you're going to need your sketchbook, a pencil, and your colored pencils. You can also use, if you have crayons or markers, that would be great too. Go ahead and get your stuff and then uh, come on back. Okay guys, so I do have a little mirror here so that I can look at myself as I'm drawing. I'm gonna set that up over to the side just so that I can see myself as I draw. If you would like to do this in front of a mirror, you can do that too. Or you could also use a photograph of yourself. That's another option for this assignment. Um, I'm going to start off just by blocking out that area for my frame and I'm just going to come in if you have if you want to use a ruler you can I just 
I'm gonna just block those lines out to make a frame for my self-portrait to go inside of. And then I'm gonna use that frame later on to add the symbols around my self-portrait. So I just made four straight lines. Then I'm gonna start off by making a curve line, kind of like a rainbow for the top of my head. And I'm gonna drop down and come back up with a U for my chin. And this part of the head right here is where my hair is gonna be. So it almost looks like um, like a swimmer with a swim cap on right in this section, okay? Now, if we divide um, the face in half right here, and I'm gonna put up a little diagram so that you can see on the left over here, um, we can use these kind of diagramming marks to help us get our portrait a little bit in proportion, which means that the size of things in relation to other things is correct. So things look um, like they do in real life. I'm gonna start off by doing two curved lines for the tops of the eyes. And if you notice, the width of one eye is the width in between the eyes as well. So that should be equal across, okay? I'm gonna come back around, look at the shape of your eyes in the mirror or in your photograph, and try to get that as close as you can. I actually made mine a little too big, so I'm gonna put my eyelids inside of that little football shape. If you made it too small, you can put it outside. I'm gonna come in with a circle, but my eyelid, I'm noticing, covers up my, my iris a little bit, so I covered up the top of that circle. And then in the middle of that, I'm just gonna put the pupil. And I'm noticing that I see a white light kind of reflecting off my pupil. I'm coming around with a little curve line. And from what I see, my eyebrow is coming right here in this section. So I'm just gonna draw a line and kind of curve as I go. My eyebrow goes right down into my nose. So I'm gonna just come down and around and loop around and then draw the nostrils on the outside. I wanna just make the shape of my nose a little bit different here. And you may notice already that your nose kind of fits right into this eye part. Now I'm noticing I'm not gonna have enough face, like I've made my face a little too narrow here, so I'm gonna to need to come in and add a little more face. This is why it's always good to draw light till you know it's right, so you can erase if you need to. And as you already know, if I'm moving too fast, you can pause the video at any time, okay? If I drop down from the middle of my eye down, that will show me right where my mouth, the width of my mouth needs to be. And I'm gonna be quiet for a second so I can look at my mouth. And your mouth is made up of three lines. I just have to work on the shape of my face a little bit now on the outside edge. And your ears are going to hit right about where the top of your, where that eye line was and come down right to about where the mouth is. So I'm gonna come out and around. Now everybody's hair is gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna kinda of come out from this area, but let's give ourselves a neck and some shoulders. And this is where we really start to make you look like you. So you're going to really think, like my hair's pulled up today, so I'm gonna draw all those lines pulled up and have my hair in a bun a little bit, add a little detail to my ears, add my earrings. If you have glasses or freckles or birthmark, now is the time to add all of that stuff into. And I'm going to start to add a little bit of color and finish up my details a bit and then add my symbols.
Okay, guys, so here is my completed self-portrait with my symbols. I added an apple because I'm a teacher. I did the vines again like I did on my sketchbook cover uh, for nature. And I also, you'll see, you might notice, added a little touch of color here and there, but not too much. Like I just put a little on my eyes, um, a little bit in the background just because of time. There's, you know, not a lot of time. If you want to work for longer than 30 minutes on this that's awesome don't forget to take a photo i can't wait to see your self-portrait with your symbols that represent yourself um, make sure you post it on google classroom so that i can see and have a great week i'll see you all really soon